Howdy, howdy. Welcome on in to the pre-show for the free show. I need to tell you about something amazing that's happening. Oh, wow. Okay. Because I have made... I don't think I'm the first one to discover it. Okay. But I hope that I'm the first one to bring it to the forefront. Okay. Let's talk about the kids. Kids? The kids today. Oh, okay, the youths. The youths. Yeah. The teens, specifically. Okay. As you know, I fear and respect the teens. It's fair. The last thing I want in this world is to get roasted by the teens. Yeah, they That's will cancel fact, you. That is, in fact, my number one fear, is being roasted by teens. That's fair. Teens why are mean. Do you, why do you think I wear the shoes that I do? This is true. Because they're comfortable? No. Because I don't want to be roasted. Fair. So around these parts, we've been having big weather, you may have noticed. And so as a result, um, like for example, we've been paying attention a lot to school closings. Mm -hmm. uh, you may, for example, I was paying very close attention to Dallas ISD on what, on Tuesday night. Yeah, because we were going to do the show from Sock on Wednesday. Do the show of South Oak Cliff on Wednesday ends up that Dallas ISD is closed on Wednesday, but I'm paying a lot of attention to school closings. You know, the little scroll at the bottom, right? I've got takes on that too. That's, okay. We can table Go that. Go for it, no. Well, no, I uh, like when we were when I was a kid, and mm -hmm. same when you. Like we legitimately had to wake up had in the wait. morning mm -hmm. and watch the scroll, and it was one of those things that it got to the point where you had to kind of start getting ready, but then you didn't want to miss it because if you missed it, you missed it. Now they just wake up to like text or they can check Twitter. Push like, alert! Yeah, we found out the Dallas ISD was closed from looking at Twitter. So not the same. So a lot of it is, is through social media now. Mm -hmm. We found out that my kid's school was closed over social media, right? Mm -hmm. That's the new thing. It's, it's, it's school districts posting on social media that they're closed. And I am here to tell you that there is a new phenomenon going on on social media. Okay. Are you familiar with the concept of astroturfing? No. Okay. This is a political term. But astroturfing is when companies will funnel money to, uh, let's just say, make it appear that there is a grassroots uprising for a certain, like, lobbying technique, like a certain lobbying, like, position that happens to benefit that company. So, for example, you may see oil companies who are like, oh, man, I think fracking's great. Or you know what I mean? Like, uh -huh. uh, you know, like, and, and suddenly like you see, but it's, it's all fake. It's all funded by this company. It is all fake, like outrage, fake, like noise yeah. created by them, by them. It's not grassroots. It's AstroTurf. You see? Okay. That's why it's called okay. AstroTurf. That makes sense. Okay. Got it. I'm here to tell you the kids are creating fake Twitter accounts and trying to convince their school district <laughs> to be closed. Okay. <laughs> Now, perhaps you're thinking now, Tepper, that seems like uh, a little bit over the top. Why would, you, why would you make those types of accusations? Let's go to the tape, okay? Watch this. I'm going to pull this up on the screen. So this was an announcement last night. Uh, this was an announcement on uh, February 1st. Okay. So that was Wednesday night, Wednesday yeah. afternoon from Louisville ISD. Inclement weather update. All LISD campuses and facilities will remain closed on Thursday, February 2nd due to weather conditions. Okay, fine. No big deal. Scroll into the comments. Oh, gosh. Scroll into the comments. A lot of people asking about Friday. Anything new for Friday. Take off school on Friday. This, this, this. But here's the one that really drives me here. Is Twitter handle Haley122210024. Let's just take a look at Haley. Okay. Okay, so here's Haley. She's a mom of three, heart emoji, in Flower Mound, Texas. Uh-huh. Amazing. Interesting. You'll notice that she joined in January 2023. <laughs> That's interesting. Let's take a look at all of her tweets, tweets and replies. Uh -huh. Oh, what's this? All she's ever done is reply to Louisville ISD and ask them to keep schools closed. Why are y'all sending our... This was when they were going to go for half a day. Uh -huh. Why are y'all kids sending sending our kids for half a day? Sending our kids two hours later does not magically get rid of the dangers on the icy roads. The ice isn't gone. Therefore, misspelled, still putting our kids in such dangerous situations, especially those who drive themselves. I mean, I feel you, Haley. I really do. 
We need answers sooner than later, LISD. Literally the only thing she's ever tweeted is about this. This is her first one on January 30th. It's absolutely ridiculous. The weather is only getting worse and other school districts have closed. Y'all need to close school and send our kids home. Speaking as a parent of three. And you're thinking, well, Tepper, you don't have any hard evidence. Just take a look at this picture. Well, that's interesting. Here's just a photo of a mom, right? You familiar with reverse in uh, image search pickle? Because allow me to introduce you to Ohio State grad student Megan Vendemia, <laughs> who, let me pull this up, you can see in the 2017 Ohio State graduate student spotlight. <laughs> The kids are creating fake Twitter accounts to bully their school uh, district into canceling school. That's amazing. Now, I want to be clear about something. I think this rocks. <laughs> that's amazing. I think this rocks, and I, for one, support the kids. That's so funny. But let's not be blind to what's happening. <laughs> There's astroturfing going on. To cancel school. From people named... Haley, who's actually Megan Vendemia, who, by the way, is now uh, a professor at Chapman College. <laughs> Hi, Dr. Vendemia. Thank you for your courage, and thank you for lending your mugshot to, Haley, to a random <laughs> Twitter account to be used to try to get Louisville ISD to cancel school. That's so good. And there's a lot of them. It's happening. That's so funny. That's, That's amazing. That's today in teens. <laughs> Hit the theme expo. Yes, yes, y'all. From the Dave Campbell's Texas Football Mothership here in beautiful Louisville, Texas, it's Texas Football Today, a show online. My name's Greg Tupper. I'm the managing editor of Dave Campbell's Texas Football Magazine, texasfootball.com, a corresponding website. Thank you for spending part of your day with us. Whether you're watching us live, texasfootball.com, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, all the places, or you'll show us in the podcast, which you can subscribe to on the podcast vendor of your choice. Either way, thank you for doing your part. Support your local mediocre internet show. I'm sitting here, sitting over there at the helm today, making us sound good. She is the Duchess of the Dorks. She's actually Pickle. Howdy. You doing all right? Yeah. It's Friday. It Fri is, in fact. Yay, as the teens say. Again, we're trying not to get canceled. It is, in fact, Friday, although it feels like just like... <laughs> I. Uh, so my kids have been out of school all week. They're out of school today. Yeah. So, um, and then uh, you remember a pipe burst last Friday. Mm -hmm. And so of the last six school days, they have been to school once. Yep. Yeah, I was, uh, I was talking to some of my buddies last night, and I was like, today is, uh, I think I said it was like, tuesday or wednesday and they're like today's thursday and i was like oh my god yeah. tomorrow's friday but on the contrary to that if there's one day to like forget what day it is and then be like yeah. super pleasantly surprised i would way rather forget that it's friday and then yeah. go oh my god it's friday yeah that's, a great <laughs> that's a good it's a lot better than going oh my god it's tuesday you know oh, very true because <laughs> tuesday as we've established worst day worst day of the week yeah don't, let's not do this again. Okay. Today is Friday, February 3rd, 2023, 293 days till Thanksgiving. Happy 46th birthday to Daddy Yankee. Let's go. Daddy Yankee. You know he's 46, retiring today. this year? Yeah, I know. I saw that. 25 years in the business. Yeah. Last time we were at Pitbull, he played Gasolina, and that was, that I was have, awesome. I had no doubt that, like, I don't know. Boy, this is like borderline. This is like borderline cancelable. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that he had some sort of connection to Pitbull, mm -hmm. but like, I feel like the music is too similar yeah. for them to not overlap. They have a they have a really good crossover album that they just put out last year. Oh, did they? Uh, yeah, it was his. It was Daddy Yankee's final album, and it is fantastic okay. like really really good it's episode 1532 on today's show folks we're announcing the 2022 whataburger super team we'll hear from bonham head coach not bonham head coach former bonham head coach now woodrow wilson head coach john fish 
uh, who we caught up at the DFW Coaches Clinic last week. And then back half the show, it's Helpful Honda Mailback Friday. We're answering your questions about high school football, college football, recruiting, lifestyle, romance, travel. Get your questions on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch. We'll answer as many as we can going up until about 1230 or so. So get in on that. Do we have first four through the door? Um, we sure do. It was Aaron Arbuckle, Ed McElroy, Nick Morton, and Tony Blaylock. Welcome in, fellas. Welcome in, everybody. We appreciate you spending some of your day, perhaps it's snow day for you, even though the roads are like... Completely dry. It's it's honestly driving in, and I had to drive in late because I was on dad duty this morning mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So I drove in at like 11.30, right? I was pulling into the parking lot at like 11.30, and let me tell you, it's just like... A normal day. It's wild. Yeah, I I did because uh, I came in probably about like nine thirty, and I expected I was like, oh, I know for a fact at we kept saying like ten was when mm-hmm. it's supposed to completely be done, and I was like, well, we'll see. No, it, it may. Not. It's it done. May as well be enough, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, pickle. Let's go. It's time to announce the twenty twenty two. Whataburger Super Team. Dave Campbell's Texas Football and Whataburger are proud to honor the best and brightest stars in Texas high school football with the announcement of the 2022 Whataburger Super Team. Texas high school football fans across the state cast more than 900,000 votes on TexasFootball.com. That's true. That's crazy. That's true. And you know it's true because if it wasn't true, we would have just rounded up to a million. Yeah. <laughs> we would just be like, ah, yeah, I don't know. No, it wasn't, it wasn't a million. It was like 940-something thousand votes. That's awesome. Uh, and 40 outstanding athletes from all parts of Texas rose to the top to be named with this unique honor. For more information, visit texasfootball.com. What a super team. Let's roll out the 2022 Whataburger super team, starting with the offense, I presume. Here they are all together on the offensive side. Quarterback, Jackson Arnold from Denton Geyer. At the running back spots, Ruben Owens from El Campo and Dalton Brooks from Shiner. At the receiver spots, John Tay Cook from DeSoto, Lonnie Atkinson from Corpus Christi Miller, and Jaden Greathouse from Austin Westlake. On the offensive line, Colton Thomason from uh, Smithson Valley, Connor Stroh from Frisco Wakeland, Jaden Chapman from Killeen Harker Heights, Harris Sewell from Odessa Permian, and Ian Reed from Austin Vandergrift. The kicker, Diego Chavarria from Stephenville. At the utility spots, Taylor Tatum from Longview, Terry Bussey from Timpson, David Amador from Galena Park North Shore, and Austin Novasad from Dripping Springs. On the defensive side, up front we had three defensive linemen, David Hicks Jr. from Katie Pato, Colton Vasek from Austin Westlake, and Riley Van Poppel from Argyle. At linebacker, three of them, Torian York from Temple, Zyler Jones from Cuero, and Anthony Hill from Denton Ryan. In the backfield, defensive backfield, Malik Muhammad from South Oak Cliff, Davian Isles from Port Arthur Memorial, Bravian Rogers from LaGrange, and Javian Toviano from Arlington Martin. The punter is Owen Levesque from El Paso Coronado. The four utility spots on the defense, Peyton Bowen from Denton Geyer, Warren Roberts, Roberson from Red Oak, Tyler Turner from San Antonio Brennan, and Prince Will Umanmalian from Maynard. And then... We had the 2022 Whataburger Super Team fans' choice. So these were the guys who were the next highest vote getters at each position that, like, instead of doing four more, like, these Mm -hmm. are the next guys. So, for example, there were three defensive linemen. The fans' choice would be the next highest vote getter at the defensive line spot, I should say. So, at the quarterback spot, Jacob Vaughn from Argyle Liberty Christian. At the running back spot, Jaden Walker from McKinney North. At the wide receiver spot, Justin Navarro from Edinburgh Vela. At offensive line, Will Hutchins from Lindale. Defensive line, Boone Morris from Mount Vernon. Linebacker, Samaje Burrell from North Crowley. Defensive back, Randon Fontenet from Brazosport. The kicker, Cub Patton from Lubbock Cooper. And the punter, Kyle Chambers from Cy Fair. So there it is, the 2022 Whataburger Super Team. Thanks so much to Whataburger for being the proud presenter of the Dave Campbell's Texas Football Whataburger Super Team. You can follow them at What a Super Team. And for more information, visit TexasFootball.com slash What a Super Team. I think go. you guys did pretty well. Honestly. That's a really good list. I think you guys did pretty well. Uh, this is one again one of those things that I'm very glad I don't have to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I didn't I didn't even vote once, honestly. No. Uh, I didn't. I could have, but I didn't. Uh, but I appreciate you guys going in there and voting a pretty darn good pretty darn good class very so, very good class. the 2022 whataburger super team more information visit texasfootball.com slash what super team 
Pickle, while we were at the DFW Coaches Clinic last weekend, uh, it was myself, Ishmael Johnson, Matt Stepp, Mallory Hartley, a bunch of our media nerd friends, caught up with a number of coaches, one of them, the head coach of the Woodrow Wilson Wildcats, Coach John Fish, just finished up his first year, pretty darn good first year there mm -hmm. at Woodrow. Here's my conversation with John Fish at Woodrow Wilson here on Texas Football Today. Greg Tepper, Dave Campbell's Texas Football and TexasFootball.com here in Grapevine at the DFW Coaches Clinic with the head coach of the Woodrow Wilson Wildcats, Coach John Fish. Coach, it's good to see you. Last, last time I saw you, last time we talked, was in San Antonio, Correct. ahead of you taking your first, you know, your your first uh, steps as a play coaching your first game there at Woodrow, yep. uh, second in district behind some team I forget, um, but uh, overall some time has passed. How do you assess what you guys were able to do in your first year? It was a great year. It was a, it was a great start. Um, you know, obviously, you know, came a little short in district, and you know, uh, you know, a little early exit in playoffs, which you know it. it it's a lot of great things that took place in year one to build on top of an incredible senior class of kids that um, really set a great standard for us as a staff to be able to continue to build on in our first off season as we go into it this year. And, um, you know, you, you're never happy with, you know, being home early as no one is. You know, unfortunately, there's only one happy team at the end of the year. And uh, but there's so much to build on there. It was just a great community, a great school. Well, you mentioned there's only one happy team. That team was in your district, South Oak Cliff. And we were talking before we came on that, that you guys that was a one-score game in the fourth quarter. You know they pull away. That's, that's a championship program, obviously. But what do you what do you take from something like that? Playing the defending and eventual back-to-back -back state champions that close. You know they're they're a great team. You know Coach Shaw, they do an incredible job. And and, and I think you know you're, you're never happy with a loss. But I think when you take your first, you, you, a job in your first year and you're always looking for opportunities to affirm what's going on. And I think for our kids, um, first of all, we're playing in a district title game um, and, and then putting a, an incredible, obviously, you know, team and had them on the ropes a little bit. You know, it was a battle back and forth and, and, and just the affirmation for your kids to say, you know what, man, you do belong here. And so um, to continue to build on that and hopefully do it again next year and see what happens. So you mentioned that you're getting your uh, your first full off season, right? First full off season there, Woodrow. What are you? What are your priorities going into this off season? You know, knowing full well how 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 big of an opportunity it is for you guys to really put your stamp on the program. Sure, sure. You know, one of the things I think when you take over a program is is you're you're making sure that you're getting all the kids in, right? Um, it's about inclusivity. It's making sure you're getting your numbers up. It's making sure that uh, you know kids aren't leaving the program because there's a change and there's all these things. So, um, you know. You're, you're hammering home discipline, but you're also being flexible with kids, giving them opportunity to have a new experience. And so um, you go through a year, and I think sometimes you may deal with a few different distractions with different things, just trying to navigate and figure out that first year, while also trying to instill your philosophies, your culture, your, your, your beliefs, and all those core values you have. When you're in your first off season, now you kind of have a leg to stand on. And so it's now, hey, you know what this is now, and now you tighten it up. And now we really hone in on those core values. We're going to build our culture on discipline being the first one, you know, removing distractions, those types of things. And we know that ultimately holds you back ultimately in the end. So yeah, that's but, really a big deal. But it also strikes me that, like, let's say you guys have gone 2-8 and eight or 1-9. and nine. Sure. That is a much more difficult prospect of like in, you know infusing those core values and really strengthening them as opposed to the year that you guys did have. Do you feel like the success you had on the field is going to be able to kind of leak into the, those types of conversations you can have in the offseason? One thousand well, percent. There's no question. I mean, and that's the thing. You know, you you know you, whether it's the district title game that you come up just a hair short, or you have a great you know back, kind of back and forth game with Ennis in the first round. There's so much to build on because of that, and, and so you know when when the kids get a taste of what this is. You see a little success. Now it's time to double down on that because they they can now see it that there's proof in the pudding. All right. So now you've you've been there for a year. What do you know about this job now that you didn't know when when Penn met paper back in what April? Yeah. April. Yeah. yeah. Right. First of all, we don't have enough time in this interview. <laughs> So well, yeah, I mean, yeah, oh, yeah, it's I mean, digital. We it got to it keep going. This will have to be edited. Yeah. Um, I will tell you. Um, you know, I've sat in a head coach chair before in Bonham, um, and that had its own, you know, unique circumstances and different challenges. Um, what I know now that I didn't know then is, is number one, you know, I knew I knew I was getting into a great situation. I didn't know how great it would be. Uh, a lot of that is because of the leadership and our administration there, um, Chandra Barnett, who's our, our principal on the campus. 
unbelievable leader. Um, when you're, you see visions align on a campus that, man, you think they're aligned, they're aligned when you take the job, but when you see that in action, um, man, it's special. And so, so it's exciting. That part's exciting. I think obviously the challenges you face, the things you just don't know until you pull back that curtain, right? Um, I think now, um, eight months in, I'm a lot better as an athletic coordinator than I know I was when I first took over. Um, you know, there's just all the things you you, you kind of drink from a fire, you know, from a fire hose that first three or four months of everything from what is a you know how do I fill out a PO here? How do I how do I make sure that you know we've got security at games? How do you know all the things, the processes and the systems and. Um, oh, yeah, and trying to coach football while you're doing it. <laughs> so uh, I, I think it's just a, a unique circumstance there as far as that. But I'll tell you uh, my experience with the leadership, not just on the athletic side with Sylvia and, and, and Brian and, and Scott Jackson, all those guys, they're awesome. You know, they always say, we're not going to tell you no. We may, have, we may say not right now, but – we never tell you no, and they've held true to that. They've been so supportive with any need we have. Um, and then obviously at the campus level, we just have such great administration there that, that is, is it, it, you know, just extremely helpful and the visions align and special things can happen. Coach, appreciate your time. Congrats on the great year. Yes, Thank you. Born and bred in Texas hits a little different, as it should. Texas love doing business with fellow Texans. VCR now takes its Texas roots as seriously as its many partnerships with schools and universities around the state. It's also why we're so proud to promote our brand in the pages of the Texas Bible, Dave Campbell's Texas Football, and on the airwaves of Texas Football Today. Driven by producing quality broadcast video, state-of-the-art audio, and LED video scoreboards at affordable prices, VCR now makes sure to listen to your needs in its athletic department before recommending the next best steps. Building great products is our business, and it's our focus on building meaningful long-term partnerships with our clients that sets us apart. From our 24-7, 365-day help desk, the training lab in our hometown of Red Oak, or our sports marketing business plan that puts money back in the hands of our athletic departments we support, VCR Now is built to last. Reach out to us today at info at vcrnow.com or by calling 855 855- Go VCR now. Again, that's info at vcrnow.com or by calling 855 Go VCR now. All right, Pickle. It's time for Helpful Honda Mailbag Friday. The North Texas Honda dealers want to help you score on award winning Hondas like the rugged and reliable mm. 2023 Ridgeline. Stop by your Helpful Honda dealer today or visit ntxhondadealers.com to learn more. R.I.P. Matt Stepp. R.I.P. Not that he's like gone. Say what happened? He's just not here today. (laughs) Matt, I hope you're doing well. (laughs) I'm fairly certain I emailed with you this morning. Is he still here or is he back in Canada? It's a great question. Many people are asking that. (laughs) I wish we knew. There's no way to find out. If you've got questions about high school football, college football, recruiting, lifestyle, romance, travel, etc. Um, get in the comments, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch. We will go up until uh, 1230 uh, answering your questions. First and foremost, Pickle. Mm-hmm. What's going on at the zoo? Dude, I don't know, but I'm ready to get out there and start, you know, kicking butt if I have to. Did you hear the latest this morning? No. What happened? This is according to our friends at the Dallas Morning News, written by Aria Jones. A trustworthy source. Dateline. Dateline. Dallas. Dallas. A man was arrested in connection with two Emperor Tamarin monkeys that were taken from the Dallas Zoo this week after being spotted near animal exhibits at the Dallas World Aquarium, police say. He was trying to steal the fish? Davion Irvin, 24, was booked into Dallas County Jail Thursday night, according to jail records. He faces six charges of animal cruelty in connection to the monkey case. Police said the monkey case. Animal cruelty is terrible. You shouldn't do it. But the monkey case is a funny turn of phrase. <laughs> yes. Apparently, the investigation, along with, uh, along with help from the public, identified him as the man police were looking for, believed to have information about the missing monkeys at the zoo. Um, yes. Police said, off, police said officers received a tip Thursday that he was seen at the aquarium. Then the officer saw Irvin get onto a dart rail, later spotting him in Pacific Avenue 
before taking him to police headquarters for questioning. Holy cow. And then he was arrested. What did he think he was going to... St- okay. Obviously, you shouldn't be stealing animals first and foremost. Mm-hmm. But I do feel like stealing a couple monkeys is a lot easier than stealing an aquatic animal. Yes. Well, now, hold what on. Time out, time out, time out. Have you been the- to the Dallas World Aquarium? No. Okay. Not just fish. A lot uh, of, a lot yeah, of animals true. going around. A lot of animals. It, it's like a, it's like a, it's almost like a jungle. Yeah. It's like it's an immersive jungle. So now there the, are they got whales and stuff, but like yeah. But the likelihood, like he's not gonna no, steal a fish. I don't think he's going after a fish there. I think he's going after more. I wonder if he's mammals. going after more monkey. Are there monkeys there? I bet so. I wonder if he got monkey. He's, he's in for monkeys. Yeah, it's all happening at the zoo. Have you noticed that? Yeah. A lot of zoo activity lately. Yeah, we've been we've been keeping up with it. It's we, not cool. We are your number one source for zoo crime. They need to Which stop. Which is like a true crime pod. We should start a zoo crime pod. <gasps> I am so in on this. It's not even funny. It's a zoo crime podcast. You know what's a crime that Today the zoo, zoo did crime. do, though? I don't think I told you this. But I have one complaint about the Dallas Zoo that All I'm right, ready to bring All public. Right, let's go. Now, in lieu of everything that's going on, they, you know, obviously security needs to step it up a little bit. That's problem number one. Problem number two was we were standing there, and there was this building with all these butterflies on it, like painted butterflies. Mm -hmm. Mallory turns around, and she goes, butterflies, we need to go in there. And I was like, hell yeah, man, I'm down to see some butterflies. So we go in there. You know what the first thing I see is? A giant tarantula. And I was like, mm, mm. no. And I was like, okay, maybe they have insects over here, and I'm going to turn around and be, like, impressed by these beautiful butterflies. I turn around. There's this massive scorpion. Then I turn around and walk out. It was the insect house. Mm. Well, what's a butterfly? Right, but they only had butterflies yeah, tra- on yeah. the outside. And then you walk in, and it's the creepy crawlies. There's, like, minipedes and centipedes and all of that stuff. There were no butterflies. It was the the grody ones that's that's false advertising and it hurt my heart i just don't think it's i just don't think it's it's false advertising i think that you should put like insect display or something so that that way you know but it was just this cute little building with butterflies all over it totally misleading yeah i mean i get it not cool um give give me a warning because like some people do you hate snakes or spiders more because I feel like every person hates one more than the other. Boy, it's a tough call. I'm going to go with snakes. Okay, see, I, I can deal with snakes. I think that was just a growing up in the country thing. They mm-hmm. were just kind of there. Spiders? N- absolutely not. I will shrill like a little girl. Shrill. Shrill. Squeal. Squeal. Either one. Don't do spiders. I walk in, there's a giant tarantula. I was like... Rude. It's time for Help Upon a Mailbag for Friday. Answering your questions. High school football, college football, recruiting, lifestyle, romance, travel, zoo crime. Yeah. I'm Got any go. zoo crime questions? We're your Fight source. Those guys. Do we have any questions, Pickle? We sure do. Um, this one might take you a second, but looking at the program rankings, mm-hmm. what, teams, what teams in 5A and 6A, mm-hmm. not in the top 100 programs, Okay. Could you see making it to AT and T Stadium next year? Excellent question. Excellent question. Good job, Ed. Um, five A and six A, making it there. Yes, that are not in the top one hundred. It's a good question. I mean, one there is a team that does have a state a, a state title appearance in the last six years. And it's Crosby. Crosby is one twenty seven in our program rankings. They do have a state title game appearance. Um, that's certainly one. Port Nature's Groves could make it back. Yeah, Port Nature's Groves is, is outside the top 100, but they could they could be in that mix uh, as well. Um, if you're looking, but I, I feel like that's cheating, right? Mm-hmm. I'll give you I'll give you two, and and maybe it's part of a bigger conversation that we've had a number of times. But number 141 and num- number 142, okay, right next to one another. Cibolo Steel and Converse Judson. Yes. Okay. Now. Part of the problem there is that they would be, they would have to get through Austin. Mm-hmm. They'd have to get through and West they Lake did Travis. Half of it this year, right? They made it through Lake Travis, mm-hmm. but right? Then there's Wesley. So the question would be, can they find a way through? And and that's just that's you know 
but you know, I'm not, I guess that that's part of a larger conversation, which is that I'm not ready to give up on San Antonio at the big school level. Mm-hmm. Um, it's been a minute. But you're just not going to pick it to happen. Because I wouldn't can't. pick it to happen. Yeah. But but those would be two teams that I immediately look at that, that I say they have an opportunity to make a to make that, that type of leap. Um, yeah. There's another team lurking, lurking at 157. Lovejoy. Now, Lovejoy is an interesting case. Lovejoy... Lovejoy's been a team we were hot after the past couple of years and mm-hmm. I think has fallen short of our expectations. Admittedly lofty expectations, but fallen short of those expectations. Maybe this is the year they put it together. But if you were to ask me who would be that team, I would say right now maybe it's one of those San Antonio teams. Converse, Jetson, or Civil Steel. Yeah, I like Out the, that. Outside the top 100, but an opportunity to make it to AT&T Stadium. Depending yeah. on how the brackets break and, and things like that. If so. it was last year, I think that we could have said that Edinburgh, Velo, or PSJ North yep. was in there. But they, yep. I think they both graduated a pretty heavy they, class. Or PSJ they, North won't, won't but okay. Vela does. Vela graduates pretty heavy as well. Um, so, yeah, there'll be a team. That's that, a good question. Like, thanks. Well, I didn't. You didn't do anything. Oh, I thought you meant answer. It wasn't no. Answer, <laughs> What's next? Um, how do you feel Texas State will do in conference this year under new head coach DJ Kinney? I think they're going to be exciting. I'll they say got that. Some good recruits. Malik Horns be coming in mm-hmm. uh, at the quarterback spot, presumably to take over at quarterback. Um, I think they're going to get moving, and I don't know if I want to put this on wax on February third. But I'll just say this. So the Big 12 schedule came out, right? Uh, Big 12 schedule came out, so all the teams have their have their schedules. That's that's great. That's 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 good doings. Okay. One game we knew was going to happen, mm-hmm. but I just want to put it on your radar. Do you know who? Do you know who Baylor opens with? Is it Texas State? Ooh, that's tasty. They open with Texas State, and Texas I'll just State say this. Played them well last year too. And I'll just say this. Strange to say this, I think I know which team I have fewer questions about right now. Mm-hmm. Here on February third, obviously a lot of lot of runway between now and then, but I'm just saying. And you want to talk about making a statement in your opener? Mm-hmm. I was going to say, and there's no doubt that GJ will have his guys fired up for oh, that they'll game. Be ready. Like, th- they'll be a lot more fired up for that <coughs> game than Baylor will. They ain't holding back anything because that's mm-hmm. going to be an opportunity to that. That is a this year is different. Like things have changed. Like changing of the guard type opportunity there in the opener. I'm not here predicting it. I'm here to say that came out and I go, huh, well, that's interesting. Again, I think if they played Baylor in week week 13, it'd be a way different situation. Mm -hmm. But Baylor in week one? Pretty good. Never know. With a lot of question marks on that Baylor team. A lot of question marks. All right, what's next, Pickle? Um, going back to program rankings here, because mm-hmm. another question got brought up after this. I like this one. Um, a team not in the rankings because they are too new. Mm-hmm. Again, you have mm-hmm. to be six years in the program rankings um, that could make it to AT&T. So the easy answer would be the highest ranked team. If you're interested, the highest ranked teams uh, that are ineligible, Shadow Creek, Yeah, they would have been, they would have been 83rd. In the I, I don't know if I feel comfortable saying they can make it to AT&T. Now, yet. moving up to 6A has been tough because yes. they, a lot of this is due to what they did at 5A where they made it to a title game and they won the championship the year after that. With 6A numbers, With basically. 6A numbers. That's certainly part of it, right? That's the team. Um, Bridgeland's interesting, but they're going to have a new coach. Yeah. And Cy Fair ISD is always tough. San Antonio Harlan is also a very... A very... Um, they are a very intriguing program that's still very much in their infancy, but at the 6A level, I, I don't know that I love their chances there in Region 4. Katie Pato's on that list as well, but yeah. again, moving up to 6A, it was a rough year. I think that they're also, even with Coach David Hicks, um, there, I do think they're losing, they're losing a ton, yeah. and they're losing um, uh, the linebacker, too. Mm-hmm. He's going to somewhere. I forgot he signed. Um, that would be a team. If you're, looking, if you're looking to get funky, and I know you are. Always. Two teams, two teams that are come that are very, very, very much in their infancy. San Antonio Davenport, mm-hmm. I was Shaston just Golden's to say back, that. and Lake Belton. Lake Belton's a good one. So those are two because Lake Belton's going to be loaded. I'll also throw in Klein Kane. Klein Kane's ineligible. They will join the rankings. This will be their sixth season. So if you want to kind of matric, kind of kind of. Um, expound out you could talk about Klein Kane but those would be on the short list those are the teams that are the the highest ranked teams that were not eligible for our rankings on the program rankings they haven't played six seasons so there's that 
What's next? Let's see if we got two more. Yes. Um, let's go with... Uh, this one's a slight just note. It's not really a question. Is there a link to the 2022 All-State team? So we don't actually put that together. No, that's the Texas Sports Writers Association. Well, there's a few. There's, yeah. Uh, the Texas Sports Writers Association, in my opinion, does the best one. Mm-hmm. But they usually don't come out until, like, February. Yeah. Um, when we get them, we'll put them on texasfootball.com. Uh, but those usually don't come out until February. Uh, the, there's others that do it like the AP I have, or maybe AP used to do it. Uh, I know, um, the, uh, the AP, I believe one of their issues was that they only take into account, um, regular season. That's a big part of it. Yeah. Um, so that's why I find them a little bit lacking. Um, our friend Carl Padilla puts together an all-state team, mm-hmm. but I believe you need to be a subscri- like your school has to be a subscriber to his service to be eligible for their all-state team. So there's kind of like the TSWA, in my opinion, is the all is the is the um, at the eleven man level that is the the uh, the the best one. Mm-hmm. The best one. There's also coaches ones that are pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, but then, and and specifically, the six in the six man ranks, the the gold standard is the six man coaches association, yeah, uh, all state team. It's really really good, and they do a great job with that. But so those, we don't actually put those two. We, we, I mean, we just an announced our Whataburger team. Super Team. If you missed that, yeah. that's kind of our it's like kind of biggest our, team yeah, award yeah, that we do. I would say that. Yeah, that's that's as close to an all state team as we come to, and even that is fan voted. So, yeah, yeah. So that was just kind of housekeeping. Yeah, uh, the two much. questions. Yes. Um, what is your favorite cold weather comfort food? Uh, warmth. I don't like cold water. Are you um, just whipping up some warmth in your kitchen? <laughs> can I tell you something? Can I tell you a game changer? Yeah. Because Tuesday night it was already on the schedule. It was already on the meal plan. But Tuesday night was soup and grilled cheese. Okay? Mallory had soup and grilled cheese Tuesday night. For sure. Do you know why? Because soup and grilled cheese is great. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. All good. Pickle, I made grilled cheese in the air fryer. Oh. And the game done changed. Yeah. The game done changed. The perfect amount of crisp... The perfect amount of cheese. Yeah. You got to go double cheese, by the way. Two slices yes. of cheese. Yeah. Yes. Ho. Oh. Ho. Oh. The air fryer grilled cheese. All right. Game changer. I, by the way, speaking of air fryer, I, I, if you haven't already, I'll give you here's a Super Bowl pro tip. Mm-hmm. Buy your wings this weekend. Because every day starting today, it's going to get progressively harder to find wings yep. at the store. That's fair. I got mine last weekend mm-hmm. and loaded up. So get nice. yours. No. We got an ender? Um, real fast. Mine's uh, chicken and dumplings. I made... Yeah, you do. You make your homemade dumplings. Yeah, I made them. Um, nice. It's because on Monday afternoon, I went ahead and I swam by the store super quick before like everything hit. And I was like, I'm going to do this because it's perfect cold weather. Well, and I was going to say, and you, you, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but mm-hmm. that's pretty time consuming. Yes. And it's like, what else you got to do? Yeah. It was like, this is perfect. Yeah. Um, and right. then I make a huge pot of it. So it lasts me forever. Nice. Um, all right. The Ender, if you could live in any Texas city other than the current city you live in, where would it be? I think I know yours. Yeah, I'd live in Alpine. Yep, no, I knew that one. I'd live in Alpine, and I'd tell all y'all to leave me alone. That's fair. And i get Sol Ross season tickets. I, I like that. Those. That's what I do. That's why, like, that's why another reason why I like, like Alpine is, like, one of the, like, I th- like, Part of the allure is obviously getting away from it all, right? Mm-hmm. But, but there's enough going on because there's a university there yeah. with sports. And so it's like I could go and just become a big Sol Ross basketball supporter. That'd I like be it. Fun. Anyway, and a little airport. It'd be fun to be rich in Alpine. Yes. Yeah. You have a lot of like. Alpine's my answer. Like outdoor toys, you yeah. know, like four wheeler, that yeah, kind of stuff. Yeah, that kind of stuff. Um. Uh, here comes Beach Girl. <laughs> I was just going to say, a. like, if I, yeah, if I, if I didn't have to be practical, like, if I'm not thinking about a job or anything like that, I would definitely, I would definitely say probably Porte yep. and just live in a little beach condo, like not much, just a little thing and spend all my time at the beach. But if I'm being practical about somewhere I would actually really like to live and I think that I could like make it work. Um, I love the New Braunfels Canyon Lake area, yeah. probably Canyon Lake for me because one, it's not too far from home. Two, it's kind of right in between San Antonio and Austin, so you still have, you know, if you want to go to a concert, you still have that, or you need to go shopping for, not school clothes, but, you know, Mm -hmm. stuff like that. It's like you still have that option. Um, But I would say I would really like to live out in Canyon Lake. I think that is a gorgeous area of the state. I think that's a great choice. 
Excellent choice, Pickle. Thank you. An excellent addition of Helpful Honda Mailbag Friday. Yeah, rugged and reliable. Also, Step says he's here for one more week, and he is still rugged and reliable. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to do it for us. Thanks for spending a little bit of your day with us. Follow us on Twitter at DCTF. Like us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Dave Campbell's. Follow us on Instagram. Instagram.com slash Dave Campbell's. And, of course, see us at TexasFootball.com. Thanks again to Woodrow Wilson, head coach John Fish, for being our guest. For Ashley Pickle, I'm Greg Tepper. Vince Young, please meet your player of your trophy. We'll see you Monday, hopefully, unless some other crazy thing happens <laughs> on Texas Football Today. <laughs>